Thank you for staying with us on the AM show. It's time now for us to look at our big stories. And we start from the front of education. Now, the teachers' unions are unhappy they weren't consulted in the decision-making process when it comes to moving from a trimester system to a semester system for basic schools. How could that even happen? What are the issues at play? And the, 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 the teacher unions are talking about the fact that if they're going to bear the brunt of this, they ought to know so that whatever benefits they're going to get uh, can be tabled as well. Our guest for this discussion, Thomas Musa, he is General Secretary with uh, NATS, the Ghana National Association of Teachers. There's also Peter Nochukoto, uh, Ranking Member on Parliament's Education uh, Committee. Also joining the conversation, we have Peter Anti, Executive Director, Institute for Education Studies. And I'd just like to say a very good morning to you, gentlemen. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Peter, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good morning. Great. I know we are going to have uh, Mr. Nochu Koto on uh, the phone line because he's actually joining us from his constituency. So uh, we'll, we'll try to work the lines to get him as uh, well. But uh, Mr. Musa, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining us in the studio. Thank you and good morning to your good self and to your viewers and listeners. Right. The road to this semester system. Uh, how, how did it happen? Give us the historical antecedents. How did we even get here? Okay, so thank you very much. Good morning once again to your good, your, your good self and then uh, all the viewers. We, I think it was somewhere in 2019, mm. you know, as a result of the free SHS, we had a large number of students that must go to secondary school. And so the question is, how should we handle it? Because there was no space to accommodate the numbers. Right. And so upon thorough discussion, it came up that normally when the students vacate, they have, they have spaces in the schools. Mm. So can we adopt a different operating system where we can get large numbers of our students going to school? And so it was agreed that, look, Temporarily, and I repeat, the word is temporarily, let us get the same, let us get two of the cohorts going to school. Mm. And by getting them to go to school, it means that we need to run the semester system. So the first badge will go, then when they come back home, whereas the others are at home, they're also getting tuition uh, elsewhere, the second badge can also go. So by so doing, the goal track then the green track was introduced. Now, just after 2019, when we were thinking that we'll be able to face it out, then in 2020, COVID also visited us and we were hit hard by COVID. And if you could recall from somewhere the, March or, uh, the month of March, the country, we had to close down Ghana, also lock down all the educational institutions because of COVID and we came back the last two months of 2020. So before we came back, the question was, how do we ensure that all the contact hours lost and the period lost are recovered so that the academic calendar will not be disturbed? So we're just we're trying to make up for lost Exactly. Time. So okay. another temporary arrangement was put in place to enable the JHS students come to school to come and complete the curriculum or complete the syllabus to enable them to write the exam. Mm. So these two arrangements were a temporary arrangement to get them to come and finish the work. Then in 2021, we continue with it to enable them to get the work done. So if this particular point in time, something that was granted you because, uh, based upon temporary arrangement and you think that you want to make it permanent, you come to the table you come to the table per the collective agreement so that it will be discussed, negotiated, and agreed upon. And even look at whether the system you want to introduce is even good for the basic level or not. I think we'll get into the discussion to even know whether it was good for the system, is good for the basic school or not. But like I have said, we adopted the semester sim system for the SHS and then the GHS as temporary arrangement, given the exigencies and the challenges that confronted the nation at the time. And it was not something that 
uh, we agreed there should be a permanent thing. So it, when somebody is saying that we're consulted, no, it was about because of the temporary nature of the challenges at the time, mm. these things were done, and it must be placed on record as such. Right. Uh, for, for you, for you uh, Peter, I just want your uh, quick take on, on uh, this one. From the standpoint of a group like IFEST, uh, here we are having a semester uh, system. The teachers' unions are wailing about it, but did you see this coming? And is it, is it a, a step that we should even be, be taking at this point in time? Hello, <clears throat> it's that question for me. I think I lost Yes, it is for you, that. Peter Auntie. Yeah, please. So please, can you take it again for me? So I was just saying that we got a bit of a background to getting to a semester system from a trimester system. And I'm saying that the teachers unions have their grave concerns. But for you, uh, did you see this coming? Is it a step that, that we should be taking at this point in time? Hello? Can you hear me, Peter? Peter, auntie, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, so we're going to work it out. As and when we can uh, get uh, Peter Ante, we'll get back to him on that question. So, in effect, this was not something that was meant to be no, a long-term solution. We didn't see it coming. It was meant to be a stopgap measure. Exactly. The teacher union didn't see it coming. Nobody mm. saw COVID coming. Mm. Nobody saw the challenges in 2019. We didn't see these things coming. Mm. And so once we were hit with it, we needed to do some so it, temporary arrangement. Let us right. get that this way. And so once we are out of that particular place, we need not, you need not come and tell us that this thing has not become permanent. And that is what we are saying, you know, particularly extending it to the KG and then the, 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 the lower so, so, so we'll get to that point. But you rightly stated that the exigencies, COVID-19 and exactly. others, others sort of started us on this road. But, yeah. but the same exigencies still apply. We're still in the midst of... No. COVID-19. Hold it, hold it a second. We're still in the, the, the grips of COVID-19. We're still facing some challenges. And you know, our academic calendar has been shaken for, for quite a while. I mean, the reopening of schools, the closure of terms, uh, the restart and all of that, it, it's not exactly been fluid for the past two years. We've had our own challenges, partly owing to uh, COVID-19. So uh, don't you think that these ex exigencies also warrant some of these decisions being taken to ensure that students can get all the class hours, the, 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 the teaching time they need? So it is important that we appreciate the explanation that I'm going to give. Mm. You see, at the basic level, at the basic level, the same, if you come, let, uh, we're talking about the semester system at the trimester. The semester system has its own arrangement and principles. Which, the, which, which are what exactly? So with the semester system, they use the lecture, system, they use the lecture method. Mm. With the semester system, no student goes to the lecture hall to stay there from morning 7 a.m. up to 3.30 p.m. It doesn't happen. Mm. Because the times are scheduled. Right. So the whole day, you can have a student who have only two hours. Right. The whole day. So Monday, I will just look at my timetable. I have only two hours. So I go, let's say, from 8 to 10. I am done the whole day. On Tuesday, I have, let's say, two periods. So that will be four hours. I am done. But you are introducing a semester at the basic level where you are asking the teachers and the students to go to school from 7 to around 3.30 p.m. Now, guess what? By that, if you are asking somebody to go to school from 7.30 to uh, uh, 3.30, look at the arrangement. The worker will have to start from the house or start preparing from, from the house around 4 a.m. And you must leave the, your house by 5 a.m. Because you, will go, you are going to board trotro to enable you to get to school. Mm. And once classes begin at, uh, begin at 7, you must get to school by 6 to prepare the students before classes begin at 7. Mm. And you are going to be with them from now 7 a.m. up to 3.30 p.m. Now, at the basic level, like I've told you, we teach, we don't lecture. I repeat, at the basic level, we teach, we don't lecture. And if you look at UNICEF's own 
concept of teaching and learning. They are what we call learning through play. Right. And so... That is for those at the very basic yes, level. Those, kindergarten. Kindergarten. You don't go and lecture somebody at KG level. You don't lecture him. Mm. You learn through what we call play. Right. You learn through... It is an activity oriented. Mm. So, for example, when the teacher goes to the KG or class one or class two to teach, you start with something like my head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulders. These are not things you can lecture. These are things that you, the teacher, will have to do, and you do it with them. And it is, I mean, it is an activity oriented. You learn through play for six good hours. Look, by the time if you start with the children with this particular activity oriented, don't forget that we are now doing the standard based curriculum. Right. And the standard gate with the standard based curriculum, the principle there is that it is the child centered learning. Mm. And so once it is the child centered learning and it is internationally being accepted and UNICEF is even promoting it that children must learn through play and all those things. By 12 o'clock, the KG children, they would have been tired and you see them sleeping in the class right. and all that. And aside that one, you are asking the children to stay in school from January to somewhere June. What's that? I, since 1989, that I did my national service at 28 February Girls Road Primary School and went to St. Thomas to go and teach at the JHS and from there to the training college. I have not done any other work than teaching. I have taught at the uh, KG level. I have taught at the primary level, taught at the JHS, and I've been a head teacher before. Mm. This semester... Is, is, is this the first time you're seeing anything like this? Um, see, I am, see, I am, um, so I'm explaining this for people to know that I am speaking from a professional point of view. Mm. And I am speaking as a practitioner. I have been in the system since 1989. Mm. You can calculate the number of years I have been in the teaching profession. And so, this particular thing that we are saying, it is dead on arrival. It is dead dangerous. On arrival. Yes, it is dangerous. dangerous. Mm. You to introduce a semester system at the KG level, it is dangerous. Okay, uh, hold your horses right there. Let me engage uh, Peter Nochukoto. Uh, who is ranking member on the, uh, the Education Committee of uh, Parliament. Honorable, a very good morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you. How are you doing? I am doing very well. I hope you're well too. Very well too. Right. I know, I, I know that uh, today you find yourself in your constituency, Akachi North, I, I, I believe. Is that where you are? Yes, that's where I am. Yeah. Right. Uh, just to kick off the conversation, how is Akachi North and um, what is the latest uh, that you can tell us from there, what you're doing? Oh, all is well, uh, except that uh, teachers are worried about this uh, new academic calendar that uh, has been, uh, I don't know whether authored or released by the Ministry of Education and the General Education Service. They are at a loss of the attempt to manage it with uh, the infrastructure uh, environment you see during uh, the spine that says both teachers and uh, learners. So right. that is the uh, latest in their concern. Okay. Uh, so, so, so let's get right to it. Uh, let's, let's reach for the jugular. I've heard you speak on this matter when it comes to education and how you feel about it. The teachers' unions are saying, first of all, they were not consulted. Secondly, if they are going to put in those man hours, uh, is it going to come with any benefits uh, for them? And maybe lastly, they feel the semester uh, system is not the solution moving forward. But from where you sit, with your vast knowledge when it comes to education, is there no way of accommodating this semester system? What are the pros and cons, if you like? What is good about it, what is not? And where can we find some middle ground? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. As far as I know, semesters are for tertiary institutions. Uh, this is because of the structure within which the academic calendar is operated over there. Mm. As uh, the gentleman said, uh, at the minister level or that level, you have lectures not throughout the whole day. And you go when it is time for your lectures and you leave. Another group comes to take over the use of the lecture hall. So at that age, you are able to manage it. Now, if you come to the, this level, you look at the age level of uh, the learning. Right. Somebody is six years old in class one. And you want that person to remain in school from 7.30 up to 3.30. In fact, I don't know what uh, influenced their decision. Because if a technical committee is set up, 
to uh, come up with a, how do you call it, an academic calendar. I'm sure that they should have involved the teachers, uh, especially the teacher union, in this thing. Now, you formed a committee, and you made a deputy minister the chairman of the committee, not involving the director general or any of his deputies to rather um, take over the chairmanship of the committee and then provide professional advice. Why, why are we going? So, to me, the minister is not workable at the basic level. One, learner fatigue will set in. A child that learns to a point or can concentrate to a point, and after that, no matter what the teacher does, the child will not be able to absorb anything. Then the teacher himself, you see, the teacher must close early, go home, and prepare for the next day. So if uh, one teacher is going to handle a, a class from uh, assuming 7.30 to 3.30, how does he get work, how, how does he get home and prepare for the next day? Marking of exercises and uh, the preparation of uh, lesson notes. So I think some of these things, the ministry failed in uh, taking them into consideration. Then, again, the number of weeks. I know at the tertiary level, I don't know if they are changing now, but it is 16 weeks that we do for a semester. Right. And you want a basic school to run 20 weeks of a semester. How come? So in the year, it's going to be 40 weeks. But when we are practicing the semester, we were able to do about 42 weeks in a term. You see, from January to March or early April, they break. Then they come back in May. By July, August, they break. Then September, they go. By the middle of December, they break. So that the child, both the child or the learner and the teacher can have time to rest. You see, so to me, this arrangement has, uh, as the other government has already died on arrival. The ministry must withdraw it. It is professionally wrong for on their part. And uh, in fact, it is not workable to me. Yeah. So, so this is completely unworkable. Completely yeah. unworkable. Yeah, it is not workable. And, and it's something that, uh, as ranking member of, of the Education Committee, that, that, that's the stance you're going to adopt. Is, is that the stance of, of not just you, but yeah. your caucus in Parliament? I mean, I know you are not, Parliament is yet to reconvene, but the thoughts you've been sharing with your colleague MPs, are you on the same page in, in respect yes. of this? Yes, oh yeah, we're all on the same page. You see, if you look at uh, even the environment in which uh, our teachers and then the students do the teacher and learning, that, you realize that we don't have the adequate infrastructure. Where even theory has uh, to school uh, stoops, teaching stoops to go and, and learn. And you want them to go and sit as comfortably and then for self Honorable, we're losing your voice a bit. We're losing your voice a bit. Yeah, I'm saying that uh, if you look at uh, the environment in which the teaching and learning activities take place, mm. you will discover that we don't even have the appropriate uh, uh, furniture. In some communities, learners or children have to carry home or carry to school to the uh, kitchen to, to go and sit and learn. And they are going to sit uncomfortable for these hours. So it's not proper. The classrooms, some of them are poorly ventilated. Mm. So if you want to keep the child in that environment for a very long time, you are endangering uh, his or her health. So it is not the best for us to do this uh, kind of a semester program, which okay. uh, I think is just going to bring in fatigue. The children cannot concentrate. The teachers will be tired. So it is better if you don't uh, for now. All right. Uh, Peter, auntie, if you, if you can hear me now, uh, just to clarify, can you hear me, Peter? Yeah, I can hear you well. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm making reference, Honorable, to Peter, auntie. Peter, auntie, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, good great. morning to your... Uh, viewers, uh, can I get a question now, please? Yeah, so the question is, uh, and, and in the studio we have Thomas Musa, General Secretary of NAT. He says this entire uh, semester program that has been planned Hello? is, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Peter? Yes, the internet connection. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, so I'll go slowly. Yeah, please, the question. I will go slowly, Peter. All right. Uh, we have Thomas Musa. General Secretary of NAT. He says the semester system is dead on arrival. We have the ranking member on the Education Committee, Peter Nochukoto. 
who says it is completely unworkable. What is your verdict and why? Did you get that, Peter Andy? Well, uh, maybe we might uh, want to reach Peter Ante uh, by the phone line. Likely we'll do that just so we can have a proper uh, interaction. It doesn't appear his Zoom connection is, is aiding us uh, this morning. We'll, we'll do that and see where that leads. As we're moving the conversation forward, uh, Thomas, so it means that as far as you are concerned, even the, the matter that is brought up in today's daily graphic about consultation and even compensation, you're, you're not even interested in the second leg of the conversation because you don't even think this should see the light of day. That's, that's the whole point. Yeah, so you see, it's important to add all those things. Mm. Somewhere last year, in August, right. there were challenges in the implementation of this whole thing, this temporary arrangement right. I gave you 2019-2020. And because of that, we held a press conference on August 10, 2021. We outline nine strong points, among other things. Mm. And when we did that, the matter went to the Labor Commission. In fact, it was the National Security that even took us. So the matter went to the National Labor Commission. When we went to the Labor Commission, the Labor Commission directed us, even gave us 17th of November, that we should go and settle all our standing issues and report back to the commission. On the 17th of November, we realized that the work could not be completed. One of them has to do with the teachers teaching in the deprived areas or underserved areas. We could not get the work done. No, we could not finish rather. And so we needed to get the work done. Then suddenly Ghana Education Service last week introduces a new timetable among other variables which are key to the matter that went before the commission. Right. And if you look at this, this is our collective agreement. Mm. It provides procedures to be followed. Right. When you want to get this thing, the GES didn't go according to it. So the GES itself is in breach? Yes. Right. They violated our collective agreement. That it, this timetable and all the things you are talking about ought to be negotiated. This is our code of conduct, which also provides saying that it must be negotiated. Then. The Labor Commission's own directive to the Ghana Education Service and to the teacher unions, the GES has breached it. Mm. And you've gone ahead that you want to introduce this particular thing, regardless of all the directive that the Labor Commission has given. We have a problem with it. Mm. And that is why yesterday we've issued a statement that GES should be mindful mm. of this particular activity. And we hope that GES will take note of what we've said and ensure that the peace of Ghana is not disturbed. Tell me, the, the, the education framework, the, the ministry, the GES, uh, I mean, they have also made known some positives of, of, of this system. And in the end, the bottom line is that they just want uh, the, our young ones at the basic level to get the right education and catch up when it comes to the impact of COVID and all of that. And I keep reminding you that we are in the thrust of a COVID uh, <laughs> pandemic. So tell me, uh, and, and you seem to be, <laughs> I know that is not excitement. It is a bit of sarcasm there that you are, you know, you see, your laughter. You know, you use a word that right education. Look, every employer has three main duties. Right. Every employer, you have three main duties. Mm. Number one, you are to employ a competent staff. Mm -hmm. Number two, you are to provide tools and all the materials to the worker to enable the worker to deliver. And the third thing you do as an employer is you supervise it. I repeat, every employer, when you employ, you employ a competent staff, you give the competent staff the tools he or she needs to deliver and to bring his competency to bear for you to appreciate. Mm. Then the third thing you do is for you to supervise. Look, the whole of last year, 2021, capitation grant has not been paid. And so... If you put a competent staff in the classroom and the capitation grant has not been paid, the uh, textbooks and all those things, and what do you expect? No, tell me, what do you expect? Is so there... a paucity or lack of textbooks, there's also the bit about your capitation grant. So, 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 so in, in a nutshell, 
the system, the framework is simply not ready exactly. for, for a semester system. Ex I mean, is that exactly. what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. It is not, it's not about, like I'm saying, the semester is no good for the primary and uh, for the basic level. Mm -hmm. Then, therefore, if there is anything to be done, these things ought to be discussed. Like we have said, it must be discussed among stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Let us take our time and get it done. Let us take our time. Talking of taking uh, our time and getting it done, uh, 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 then, then you move away from the suggestion that it can't be done to the point where no. it can, but we need further deliberation. Yes, so, consultation. So it, it's possible. You cannot say that. See, when we say, that is why we say that, that it must be withdrawn. When you, are bringing a, when you are bringing a policy and there are stakeholders, they've made observations and they are telling you that, look, this thing you are bringing, it is the time you are bringing it is wrong. And not only that. And that the level where you want to introduce it, it is also not good. Why? Because this thing, we brought it on board. We, there was a reason why it didn't come to the primary level. Mm. The JHS level and the SH level, it was a temporary arrangement. Right. So if this time around you think that this is the way we should go, let us take our time, discuss it and all that. It has not been done. And like I've told you, you, are, you mentioned that it should help children get the right education. Look. If you ask children to go to school from January to uh, December and the resources are not there, what will happen? Good question. L let me engage uh, Peter Anti now of iFest. Uh, Peter, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Right, Peter joins us over the <laughs> phone lines now. So very briefly, uh, owing to the passage of time and the fact that we've not been able to get your first take, I'll just go back briefly. Thomas Musa, General Secretary of NAT, says this semester system is dead on arrival. Uh, Honorable Peter Nochukoto, uh, Member of Parliament for Akachi North and ranking on the Education Committee says it is completely unworkable. What is your verdict and why? All right, thank you very much. Um, yes, at the beginning of the year, we released a statement and in the statement we indicated that a decision-making process in the education front because of its their consequences on the students if they don't do well should be backed by research and data. We felt that the ministry and the Ghana Education Service had a brilliant opportunity after they have implemented this semester system at the junior high school level to have reviewed it to find out what the, the responses and the effect and whatever it is was after they have implemented this at the junior high school level. Unfortunately, they didn't do anything of that sort. If they did, they would have put that data out, that information out that, look, after we run the semester system at a junior high school level, these are the things that we found out. And because of that, we would want to now extend it to the primary and the, the kindergarten, which is very, 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 very inappropriate. But they, 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 they didn't even do the basics of trying to find out the effect of the semester system at the junior high school level. We have spoken to teachers, and, and the secretary is there. He would confirm what I'm saying. The teachers complained that after 10 weeks, the students were exhausted. And we are talking about junior high students. They were exhausted. The teachers themselves were exhausted. Everything now was in disarray. Some would come today, they would not come to school the next day because it was not just working. So if you had, if they would, they, they did a simple survey to pick from teachers, to pick from students, and maybe parents, what the semester system at the junior high school level had amounted to, we would, have, we would not have been in this situation whereby they are now extending it and they don't have any valid and factual basis of the extension. So we, we do not support, in fact, we didn't even support the semester system at the junior high school level, uh, at the senior high school level in 2019. We said that it was not uh, uh, appropriate at the uh, cognitive development level, but then of course, because it was a, supposed to be a temporary measure, we, we, we came in and decided that, okay, let's go with it because it's a temporary measure. Now you did do a day test, it was a temporary measure. Then you now decided that we are now going to do everything and it's going to be a, a permanent something without even talking to the most important stakeholder in the sector, which is uh, the, 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 the teacher. So we do not think that we should go that direction. The ministry is, 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 is becoming characteristic of uh, taking decisions which are not based on facts and data, and even if they have it, they, they always decide to ignore it and do what they think suits them. I was asking a question that everybody seems not to have known about this, except the supposed ministerial committee that was set up to 
uh, 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 work on the timetable. So who actually or who actually they uh, consulted in, in, in terms of the preparation of the, of the timetable? We need to get serious because the effect of these things on the learner, which is the student, is very, very, very important. And if you are not careful, we are going to uh, have challenges going forward. Keeping these young kids in school for 20 weeks, and I, I'm told that they have even extended the, the school day for, from um, uh, 2, 2 30 or 1 30 there about to our 3 30 or 4 30 there about. All these things are, are issues that, that need to be looked at. In 2018, World Bank's Human Capital Index report did something. Although you, you see, we say that as our students are supposed to spend almost um, uh, expected years of school, it's supposed to be around 12 years, um, so, yeah, 11.5, 11.7 for girls, and then 11.5 for boys. The actual years that they learn, what we call the learning adjusted years of school, is only 5.7. So out of the 12 to post 12 years that students spend in school, they learn only 50% of it. That is 5.7, that is at least 6%. Which means that it is not a matter of extending the school calendar or extending the hours that students stay in school. It is a matter of efficiency. It is a matter of making sure that supervision and monitoring works so that time on task is improved and increased. That is the most potent way to go when you want to ensure that you, your students are learning and, 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 and everything is going on in the school system. You don't right. just sit down and go the lazy approach by asking mm. them to stay on campus or the school compound for 12 hours, 13 hours, and so on and so forth, mm. 20 weeks and, 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 and thereabout. We think that it is not appropriate, and the, the call from NAT and the other unions is for sense. We think that the right. DES should head to it and as early as possible take measures to, to, to reverse this, this punishment that they are melting on the students. Can you imagine KG primary school students staying in school for 20 weeks? And when you ask, they tell you that they have a break. Mm. So, so some interesting points uh, you make. Later, I would want to find out from Thomas Musa as well, the, the, the four groups, uh, CCTGH, Nats, Nagrat, and Teo, what exactly they'll be doing on the back of that. But let, let me find out from you, uh, Peter Nochukoto. Uh, uh, Honorable, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still with you. Right. Uh, so the, the, the latest is that the semester system is here to stay. And uh, we've been hearing from the Deputy Director General for Quality and Access of the Ghana Education Service, Dr. Kwabinatando. And let me just quote two of the things he says and find out whether you can wrap your mind around it and make sense of it, because these are some of the defenses they've put up. He says, and I quote, we know based on research that one of the causes of classroom absenteeism among teachers in the various schools was because some teachers sought to upgrade themselves. This is because the three-term system in the basic schools overlap with the university system. Gradually, we are getting to the point where we can align. We are giving teachers the time by aligning their system with the university systems to upgrade if need be. His second point, recent research in Greater Accra showed that because primary schools had a different calendar from the junior high schools, parents could not align. So first of all, the teachers. Now parents could not align. Research also showed that because the primary school children had a different timetable from the JHSs when the latter was in session, attendance went down by 11%. How do you react to that? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think the fundamental principles uh, behind this minister at the basic level is wrong. Uh, I would have preferred if the minister or the deputy director general uh, published the research funding on what basis. Because I know the semester program at the junior high school level, by our own investigation, revealed that after 12 weeks or the 12 weeks, attendance in school, in fact, uh, reduced. The students became uh, tired and they were not ready to attend classes. Uh, even in class, they will not pay attention. I think a professional teacher who know that after 12 weeks of sitting down and uh, learning and uh, teaching, <laughs> the teacher cannot absorb more. But just pardon my interjection here. But yeah, so you're talking about the time. Dr. Tando again mentions that in, in the, the, the previous system we were using, the trimester system, the, the, the students were in school or the pupils were in school for 13 to 15 weeks anyway. So uh, an addition of 
five weeks shouldn't break the backs of the students, <laughs> at least per what, what is being suggested. Even addition of one week is a challenge. But as we said already, after 12 weeks, don't expect any proper teaching and learning to take place. That is even the time they prepare for the right examinations and uh, go on holiday. Then in the case, the junior high school uh, semester that they practiced uh, last uh, year, our according to them was a temporary measure so that they could catch up uh, what they lost in 2020. That was the explanation given to us. So if you want to uh, extend it to basic schools, give us the reason. And I don't buy into the reason that uh, teachers need to upgrade themselves. They are already professional teachers. So any upgrade in their qualifications could be arranged. There are weekend classes that uh, many of the teachers are attending now. So that reason does not uh, hold water to me. So the teacher by himself will know what argument to do. In any case, if you keep him in the classroom for 20 weeks and he becomes tired, how can he even go and concentrate on his own studies in the universities are holding the classes again for them. So I mean, I don't buy into the reasons or the explanations given by the deputy director general. And I don't think any teacher will also buy into, into that explanation. Uh, how, how do you react, Thomas Musa, to some of these comments that yes. he's been passing? And, and let me just add, uh, I, I don't know whom we've lost, but we'll try to get back to uh, you. Let me just add that he also mentions that uh, if you take the mid-semester breaks and the, the, and the weekends, the, 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 the time still goes down. And he's saying that this is, again, another stopgap measure. It's not going to be 20 weeks ad infinitum. Uh, he's saying that it's going to be 10 weeks per you know, semester, eventually. That's, that's the, the, the plan. Would that soften the blow if eventually we move to 10 weeks it instead makes, of 20? It makes no difference. It makes no difference. It wouldn't soften the blood. It doesn't solve it. Look, let me give you an example. We have been around for some time. We have been around. This thing about teachers going to upgrade. Look, the World Bank report, I think somewhere 2011 or so, or 20, yeah, 2011 there about or so, that says that the rate of absenteeism was around 28%. We started working on it. And then in 2018, the Ministry of Education came with some reforms. That is how today, in fact, they started on arrangement where the university should adjust to see the, the basic school's uh, calendar, but the right. universities refused. So finally, in 2018, there were some arrangements, and that is how come today, the colleges of education have been upgraded into a degree awarding institutions. Mm. And attached to, attach to uh, 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 the various universities or the established ones to become satellite campuses of the established universities. And so the argument that teachers go to upgrade, uh, teachers go to upgrade all things be equal, beginning from this year, that do anybody that comes out from the College of Education is coming out to first degree. Mm. So that particular argument falls down flat. Now, the issue of about the parent angle where you must align and all that. What's that? Please, let us get serious on this thing, so. Are you suggesting the GES, no, the see, what, what, no, they are not so, serious about see, this? What he's saying, it is not something that can stand the test of. Let me give you an example. Look, if a, if a teacher is supposed to be, be in school by 7 a.m., mm. by 4 a.m. you must be up. Because you must prepare your children, prepare the house and everything. By 5 o'clock, because you are going to board Trotro, you will leave the house. Because you must get to school by 6. And when you get to school by 6, you will then go and prepare the students. Right. Before lessons begin at 7. And I've told you that when you close, uh, so between 7 to 3.30, you do what we call the contact hours. When you are done with the contact hours, you have already done eight hours. Then when school closes, you are not coming to mark. And I've told you, look, imagine that you have two, uh, you have 50 students. Mm. You have done four exercises. Mm. That is 200 exercise books for you. You have to mark. Imagine that every exercise, you, uh, one exercise book will take you two minutes. Times the 200 textbooks before you. That will be 400 minutes. 400 min minutes is about six hours, 40 minutes. Approximately, you need seven hours to mark all those books mm. because you will have to give feedback to the students 
the following day. When that is done, you go to do what we call the reflective practice. The reflective practice simply means that you assess the, 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 the aspect of the lessons that went well mm -hmm. the, and those that didn't go well, among other things. That will inform the lesson note preparation so that the next day you can go and teach. Well, and after doing the lesson notes, you go on to the last level, which is the fifth level. It is about your gathering of the teaching and learning materials. Where if you don't have it, you have to improvise. You have sometimes you have to go to the baller, go to the bush, go and get the teaching learning materials so that you can bring the lesson to the doorstep of the so, student. So this is impractical on all sorts of levels and for you. That is for the basic level. Because you see, at the at the university level, you don't you, I mean the, 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 the lecturer comes, he is speaking. Mm. Whether you write or not, he doesn't care. So, so when the two hours is up, he will pick his books, he's gone. But at the basic level, that's what I told you. Right. That at the basic level, UNICEF, this is these are internationally recognized body. They, are, they have even recommended that the way children learn, they learn through play. Mm. You cannot come to that level and come and lecture. So, so let, let, let me just Particularly ask you. Particularly with the standard base. Uh, are, are, are there any incentives? That, uh, is there any way nothing. of incentivizing you, the teachers? Nothing, to, nothing. I mean, be, because here's, here's nothing. the practicality. The, the GES is basically telling us that this, this semester system at the basic level is here to stay. Uh, see, please, I've well, told you, see. Whether, whether you like it or not, uh, they are saying it's here to stay. So how, how can you work with them to ensure that see, it works out? You see, uh, I want to believe GES didn't say that. Okay, all right. I want to believe that. The, but if GES is telling us that this thing has come to... I'll give them the benefit of hindsight that right. they didn't say it. Why? Because this is the collective agreement. Mm. The collective agreement provides for us okay. that such items must be negotiated. Okay. The GES cannot unilaterally determine those things. This is the collective agreement signed by all the parties. The code of conduct is also here, signed by all the parties. So for one party to say that, I want to set this thing aside, including the directive of the Labour Commission, what's that? Okay. I, but, I hope nobody will push the unions to do something that uh, so, uh, uh, will, not, will not be good for us. So please, I want to believe they didn't say that. Okay. Uh, two, two issues I would have as wrap on, and I don't know who, whom I have on the line uh, currently, but, but maybe just to start with you again, because I, I, I know you are here, at least. So wh when it comes to this bit about uh, some textbooks that are not carrying material that people find pleasant, I mean, if you go back to... March 2021, you would find a lot of stories there in respect of distasteful material that supposedly found its way into our textbooks, uh, caricaturing or characterizing certain ethnic groups in a distasteful manner. And NACA, the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, making certain withdrawals. We are back to this stage again where supposedly some textbooks are carrying materials that maybe some feel feeds into political propaganda. And are concerned about what we are feeding our young ones. What is your take? Why do we keep getting back to this point? I spoke to Oliver Bakavomawo earlier today, and he spoke about the fact that even the appointment of certain people to these institutions, political appointments, affect them. Do you agree? Well, when it comes to appointments and all those things, once the, 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 laws, the laws of the land provide who should do it and all those things, these things will always be with us. But the key thing is, Effectiveness, efficiency should be our watchword. Right. Look, if we have a system and our concern is about things that, could not, things that will not change anything, mm. but our, the assumption is that when I do this thing, it will help improve the system. Without providing the necessary tools, I told you earlier on, that when you employ somebody, you employ a competent staff. The employer has three main duties. You employ a competent staff. You provide the tools that the competent staff will need to deliver. Then aside that one, you supervise the competent staff. So if you employ me, and the tools I need to deliver, I need a capitation grant to, de to deliver. I need all the other resources to deliver. And those things are not there. But you rather end up saying that, you want to extend my duty. That is punishment. Mm. And I think the competent staff along the line will feel frustrated because Maslow will tell, I mean, anybody at any point in time, you want to have that kind of, the sense of actualization, that I've been able to unleash my potential mm. 
I have been able to make a mark. That is the key reason why we all okay. live, to make a difference in somebody's life. Okay. And you can make a difference in the student's life when the resources are there. It is not about always focusing on things that will not, bring it, um, uh, will not help us. We are saying that, look, let us go, uh, focus on the right things. By regarding the semester system, we think it must be, we have said it, that it must be redrawn. Right. Let us uh, go back to the, our status quo and all the other issues as outlined and those that with the Labour Commission we can go and settle there and we take it out from there. Peter Nochukoto, uh, on, on the same question, I know you've taken a look at some of these textbooks that you find uh, unusual, that you find a bit worrisome. W what is your reaction to them and, and, and how much of a role do you feel NACA should be playing in resolving this? Yeah, thank you very much. I think NACA is uh, overstepping there. Uh, I, 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 I didn't quite get that. You're saying NACA is what? That, uh, overstepping NACA. its bounds? Yes, it's overstepping some of its uh, rules and uh, responsibilities. Mm. Uh, if anybody wants to publish a textbook, you have a technical committee that will look at the nature of the book. How does the uh, book uh, create an environment that will not um, create conflict in the country? That's why the recent one that we had to fight against for its withdrawal is the same thing that is happening now. Mm. If you allow such books to be printed, which to bring about a, a national uh, disunity, it will not bring the people together. You will still have a problem with it. So we have our opinion, minority, that it is the responsibility of government to provide textbooks books for our schools. You have drawn a, a curriculum for three years now. You have not provided textbooks books for the teacher to work with. Then what are we doing? Is that to... And they, any time a new curriculum came up, the Ministry of Education considered a team of uh, professionals who wrote textbooks for uh, every subject. And what is happening now? So anybody can get up and write any book, and NACA will accept it for use in our schools. Mm -hmm. So we have been of the view that uh, we don't have any uniformity in this uh, system now. So NACA has failed uh, us to, to, to such a extent that uh, we are not happy with that. So they must look at it carefully. We are going to take up this matter as a minority again, and uh, the minister will have to answer as it is the other time. Are, are you going to forcefully move for this in the Education Committee of Parliament when, when you reconvene? Oh, yeah. No, we are, Parliament is resuming on Tuesday, yes. and we are going to take up this matter seriously, especially the minority side on the Education Committee, as we did uh, last year for the minister to appear before the House and call for the withdrawal of uh, those books from the system. Let me just take a little step back, because this bodes on politics as well. On, on Facebook, one of those watching us, um, Ras Akito, sends in a message. I can't read everything, but he says uh, it is not in the right direction, allowing a four-year-old child to be in school for six months and all of that. And he is saying, uh, I believe the next administration would abolish this government. I, I, I want to find out from the politics of it, because it means then that if you are not in support of this, does it mean a future NDC government, supposing you win power, if this semester system is implemented, would you look forward to abolishing it like this person is suggesting? Yeah, I can assure you that even without uh, uh, meeting those who are in charge of uh, the educational aspect of uh, government or party, our party, we will change the semester program if we come back, or when we come back to power in 2025. That's what I can assure you. Because I know teachers are not happy about it. And it is not helping in our education. See, we are gradually killing education in this country if we don't rise up and make sure that the right things are done at the right time. So the city that I said that it has come to stay. Where we can come to stay after 2024. I can assure Ghanaian that we will change it on assumption of office in 2025. The NDC will change it so they assume the reins of power. Uh, Peter Antti, you'll have the final bite on this conversation. Your wrap-up comments. All right, thank you very much. Um, I think that um, we, we need to take consultation seriously in the, in the sector. The, the way and manner <coughs> that um, the ministry and the Ghana decisions that we're doing about issues uh, is really much to be desired. We, we right. see that we need to take consultation seriously. If we don't do that, you will see a result as uh, um, the minority uh, ranking member indicated. If we don't do that, you will see a result of most of the things that they, they, they are doing when, in the event that there is a, 
um, a change in, 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 in government. And we don't want that in the education sector. We have had several of these things happening over, over the years, and we think that we need some stability there in terms of policy direction. And to achieve that, most of these policies should go through the requisite processes of consultation and, and in interaction, and so, so that we will not be having these drastic changes in the data policies in the, um, in, in the country. And, and my last point is that I must uh, 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 <coughs> congratulate Musa for how passionate he's speaking this morning. I, I think that teacher welfare issues are issues that affect the, the, the very basis of, of our educational system. And when, when such issues come up and they, they, the, the union come together and speak to it, I think they are able to take, take the foundations of, 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 of management and, and, and this morning, I have enjoyed listening to him. I hope that they will take this further and not just uh, 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 hope that uh, this similar system is, is reversed. They should act and ensure that the concerns of the teachers in relation to this similar system is addressed to each fuller. Thank you. Thank you. I, I meant for that to be the final point. I just recalled that there was something I had to uh, just run by Thomas Musa very briefly. So the four groups... Uh, Teu, Nagrat, CCTGH, and, and NAT. Not, yeah. What is the way forward on this? What's the next step? I suppose you've been, as leadership, you've been speaking among yourselves. Oh, yes. What's the next step, very briefly? Oh, we've spoken. Mm. And once we've spoken, we've told the GES that they violated the collective agreement, mm. they violated the code of conduct, they violated the directive of the Labour Commission. And so they cannot proceed, period. That's it. That is all. That's all right. It. So they must withdraw it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and these have been our guests uh, on this discussion. Uh, we'll also be, be picking your thoughts on Twitter uh, and, and wrap the conversation. Uh, we'll just go on Twitter and pick some of those uh, thoughts that you've been sharing with us. Uh, this one says, uh, from for Foreigner20, uh, and even the one doing medicine uh, or reading medicine as a course won't stay on campus for six months as a semester. Ministry of Education needs to work again. All right, uh, that, that's the first message coming uh, through on uh, Twitter. You've been sharing your thoughts with us. So we have uh, quite a number of them, Facebook and uh, Twitter. Uh, do we have any more from Twitter that have come through? We'll be checking uh, them out. So we still have the one from Foreigner, uh, which says so sometimes it's not worth, uh, worthy to have association because they are all one. They can't fight to withdraw things like this. Okay. Uh, Raspique says, this must be rejected uh, outright. That's what you, you, you say. And uh, this one says, if we are still in the COVID era, isn't it prudent children spend less hours in school rather than close to eight and a half hours daily and six months in school? The children are going to get exhausted after three to four hours and everything taught after would be cost 90 or zero. Parents are not complaining because they don't see the health implications and the awards and ultimately see teachers as babysitters that is keeping their children for them while they go to work. This semester system won't help at the basic level. So those are some of the messages that you've been sending us on Twitter. Uh, this, this one says, it hurts that it's the educational system we keep messing with. That is uh, at Raymond Billy Four sending in uh, those thoughts. So this is how we, we draw the curtains on this conversation. We interacted with Peter Anti of IFEST. Uh, we had Thomas Muta, Musa, General Secretary of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, and Peter Nochu Kotoko, Member of Parliament for North, uh, Akachi North, and the Ranking on Parliament's Education Committee. That is phase one of our conversation. Coming up, Parliament reconvenes on the 25th. We take a look at how MPs, uh, what they should be focusing on, and how the 8th Parliament will shape up as they reconvene. Our guest, Dr. Rashid Rahman. Do stay. We'll be right back.